there, everybody. Luke here. Just want to talk to you about the power of views inside of Inventor. And we all know they're there. If you take a quick peek here inside of your browser underneath representations, you'll see views. And we're going to be talking specifically just about views. We're not going to be talking about positional representations or levels of detail uh, in this short video. But views, and this is where you can capture all kinds of very repeatable information. And you might find yourself in a situation like I did recently where I needed to do videos and image captures of the same thing in the exact same orientation. So let's say I wanted this exact view over and over and over again. And maybe I did this two or three weeks apart. To get it to be this exact orientation, it's near impossible unless you save a view. So the way views work is, First of all, we're going to talk about the orientation of the model. So when you get a model in an orientation that you like, you can use an existing view if you have one, or you can just right click on views and hit new. It's going to automatically just order them down the line. You can give this any name you want. While the view is not locked, any changes you make are basically saved. So if I make an adjustment and I'm zoomed in really close, just like that, because I know I'm going to be working here all the time, I'm going to right click and lock that view. Now your master view and any other views, the master is basically whatever the current view is. So if I double click on master, it's going to look exactly the same. But if I have one of these other views that I've created, and this one, this is called orientation, this one has a specific orientation, and in this case, I have some transparency set as well. When I go back to my view one, it goes back to that view. So the first thing is controlling the orientation. This is really good, again, if you're creating images or videos and you need very repeatable orientation over and over again, because maybe you don't get the video or the image cut the first time and you have to redo it or you're revisiting it. Uh, maybe a couple days or weeks or even months later. These views are stored inside of the file and you can use them over and over again. The next one is visibility. So this is kind of a boring model when I'm looking at it like this. And I'm just gonna start to control some visibility. So let's say I don't want this to be visible and I have my selection set to part. That way I'm allowed to dig into assemblies. And maybe I don't want uh, some of these tabs here to be visible either. I'll shut the visibility of those off. Once I get these exactly the way that I want them, I can come in here, I can do a new view. Oh, I messed up. I forgot. Whatever view is active, when you create a new one, it goes back to that temporarily. So uh, that's fine. I will make this view active. I'll make my adjustments, get my orientation exactly the way that I want it, lock the view. So now I can go from view one to view two. So now not only am I controlling orientation, I'm also controlling visibility. The next one is the color of components. And this one I already have done. I'm just gonna show you how it works. I'm gonna activate my color view that I've saved. So in this case, I set it to a, uh, a blue glazing, so a blue glass basically. But what I can do, let's say I wanna change that. I can unlock this view temporarily so that I can make some adjustments. I'll pick that component and that component, and maybe I don't want blue glazing. Maybe I wanna set this to uh, something else. Uh, I will go to uh, an orange color, and maybe I will actually control some transparency. So I will make this uh, transparent. So not only is it orange, but it's transparent, but it's not controlled transparency with the color. It's just an override of those components. I can come in here, lock that view, now I can go from this view to this view, super easy. So I'm controlling orientation, visibility, color. The last one I wanna talk about is it actually stores your browser state as well. So you see I have a browser, a browser view created here. When I activate that, whatever's on the screen isn't as important if you're using this just to control the browser. But if you look at the browser, it dug down into an assembly and dug down into a sub-assembly. And if you find yourself going into sub-assemblies over and over and over again inside of Inventor to find a part or to work with a particular sub-assembly, this is a really good way to store that. So with browser active, I will unlock it. 
I'll get my browser to look exactly the way I want it. Maybe I want all of my assemblies to be expanded so I don't have to dig around and expand those individually. So I got all of those expanded, last one. So every single assembly here has been expanded. I can right click, lock that view. So now when I go to one of these other views, let's say I go to this orientation view, you see my browser's collapsed. When I go to the browser view, the way I left my browser is the way it shows up in that saved view. Just make sure that you are locking the views. Make sure you know which view is active and make sure that when you're creating new ones. You do realize that it goes back to kind of a generic orientation or whatever current view is active. So just be aware of that. And I hope that you start using views if you haven't already been using them. They save you a ton of time when it comes to, again, controlling visibility, orientation, color, and browser settings. Thank you.